In this screencast, we're going to take a look at some definitions related to parallel lines. First of all, parallel lines are lines that are coplanar and do not intersect. So they are lines that are in the same plane and they do not intersect. In this box, we can see that there are several lines that are coplanar. For example, AB is parallel to CD. Notice they're going from the front of this box to the back of the box. That's one pair of li lines that is uh, that are parallel. Another pair would be DH and BF going from the top of the box to the bottom of the box. And another pair would be uh, FG and AD. Now you might not think that they're coplanar, but you have to picture a plane slicing through the box on the diagonal. So they are parallel. They're going in the same direction, left to right, across the box. So AD and GH, or excuse me, GF are parallel segments. Okay, then we have uh, skew lines, and skew lines are lines that are not coplanar. And that means that they do not intersect and they do not cross. Actually, that's what intersect means. They do not intersect <laughs> and they are not parallel. And this is a symbol for parallel. So for example, BC and DH would be skew. BC is going from the left to the right side of the box and DH is going from the top of the box to the bottom of the box. So the, that's an example of some skew segments there. And they have parallel planes. Um, it's, the definition is similar to parallel lines. Parallel planes um, are planes that do not intersect. So, when we look at this picture uh, of this box, how many pairs of parallel planes do we have? We actually have three. Um, we have the front of the box, so plane A, D, H, E. Notice I went around A, D, H, E. That plane is parallel to B, C, G, F. So that's this plane back here, B, C, G, F. And notice once I started going around in this order, I went B, C, G, and I kept going. I didn't go zigzagging all over the place. So there's actually three sets of parallel planes. We have the front and the back of the box, the left and the right, and the top and the bottom. All right, so let's take a look at some other vocabulary related to parallel lines. Here, notice we have two lines, A and B, and they're being cut by this third line, labeled with a T. And that T is an example of what's called a transversal. Trans means across. So a transversal is a line that cuts across two or more lines. We could say cuts across or intersects. So uh, transversal is a line that cuts across two more lines. Our transversal here is T. Um, and when we have this happening, notice we have eight different angles that are formed, and they're numbered here, one through eight. Um, and these angles occur in pairs. We have angles that are called corresponding angles. An example of pair of corresponding angles here would be angles one and five. One and five. Another pair of corresponding angles would be uh, 2 and 6. Another pair of corresponding angles will be 4 and 8. 
And then the angles that I haven't marked, which are angle 3 and 7, would be our remaining pair of corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are basically angles that are in the same location relative to the two lines and the transversal. So they're in the same location relative to the two lines and the transversal. So for example, the ones I circled here in yellow, um, number angle one here is in the top left of this group of four angles and angle five is in the top left of this group of four angles so they're both in the top left so basically if you had to give somebody directions on where the angles are located the angles that are located in the same location are considered corresponding angles so for example angle two and angle six are corresponding angles top right top right angle three and seven bottom right bottom right same side interior angles are a little bit different. Same side interior angles have to be on the same side of the transversal. So for example, these angles are on the same side of the transversal and these angles are on the same side of the transversal. <coughs> but notice it says interior. Interior means they're between the two intersecting lines. So one pair of same side interior angles here is angles 4 and 5. Another pair of same side interior angles is angles three and six on the same side of this transversal T in between the two lines on the interior. So same side interior angles are on the same side of the transversal between the two lines. On the same side of the transversal between the two lines. And then alternate interior angles, alternate interior angles. Um, similar idea um, in terms of interior, interior meaning they're between, in this case, lines A and B. But alternate means they're on opposite sides of the transversal. So if we take a look here, angle four and six would be one pair of alternate interior angles and angles three and five would be the other pair of alternate interior angles. So alternate interior angles are on opposite sides of the transversal interior between the two lines. So on opposite sides of the transversal. And between the two lines. And last to talk about relative to parallel lines, we have theorem 3-1. And theorem 3-1 says, if two parallel planes are cut by a third plane, then the lines of intersection are parallel. Um, basically, think about, for example, um, the ceiling and the floor. Those are two parallel planes. Um, if they're cut by a third plane, let's say the wall, um, we know that the intersection of the ceiling with the wall, which is a line, and the intersection of the ceiling with the floor, which is a line, that those two lines are parallel. Um, your textbook actually has a very good picture of this on page uh, 74. They have a pretty good diagram of this. So that's it for this screencast. Um, please make sure you do um, the problems uh, using tiny URL, and we'll go over any questions you have in class. Enjoy your weekend.